It's a sellout tonight in Columbia, South Carolina for the sixth ranked team in the country in the story of college basketball. The Kentucky Wildcats are the top scoring offense in all of college basketball. Lamont Parrish in South Carolina to try to slow them down tonight. And with that and this fantastic atmosphere, we walk me courtside. Tom Hart with Dane Bradshaw. We got Alyssa Lang along for the party as well. And what a party it was on Saturday. The debut of Zvonimir Visic. Dane, I don't know if anything besides Kentucky basketball could provide a story like this. Instant impact for one of the nation's top offenses. It could not have been a more perfect debut for Big Z. And what does he do to Kentucky's offense? He provides another shooter, another passer, and maybe more importantly, some rim protects on the defensive end. Zvonimir will be in the game at some point. He's part of the nation's top offense, nearly 92 points a game. They have been on an absolute tear, and they put up 105 on Saturday against Georgia. On the other side for South Carolina, Michi Johnson grew up a Kentucky fan. He idolized Tyler Eulis, and in Rupp Arena last year, he had the game of his life. One of the most improved players in the SEC, playing the best basketball of his career, playing off the ball instead of primary point guard, has changed this South Carolina offense. Ready to go in Columbia, and this series is dead even over the last six, and sometimes here in Colonial Life Arena, John Calipari even sticks around to see the end of the game, see if he lasts long tonight. Michi Johnson gives it up. This is a South Carolina team coming off of a 13-point road win at Arkansas on Saturday. Three-point threat is their five-man, B.J. Mack, and when he knocks those down, he changes all of the spacing on that end. Cats scored 105 against Georgia, and they only had eight fast break points. That's how good this offense is in the half court. That's the fewest fast break points all season for UK. They use some clock here in the first possession. Antonio Reeves, one of the top scorers in the league, with a little push shot. His floater has been deadly. He's got the best floater in the league and the softest touch you can find. South Carolina is 13th out of 14th in the league in scoring 73 points a game. But the story has been their efficiency. They want to play at a slower tempo. They want to use some clock and try to find the best shot possible. And they're able to get it inside, but they kick it out with a shot clock at four. Here's Mack guarded by Bradshaw. They brought the double and forced a bad shot in a shot clock violation. I give all the credit to Antonio Reeves. He got switched on the big man, Mac, held his own front of the post, and did not allow South Carolina to get the post touch they wanted. The question with Kentucky is where can't they go offensively? Everybody on the floor is a weapon, only Division I team with four averaging double figures and three assists. This is a really good South Carolina defense that despite the loss, held a big time Alabama offense to their season low of 73 points in Tuscaloosa. Here's Reeves off the handoff from Bradshaw. And the freshman brings it back out. Shot clock is at two. Wagner with the drive. And blocked out of bounds. Point four left on the shot clock for Kentucky in the baseline. And Kentucky would prefer to shoot earlier in the clock, but this is the South Carolina defense. They rotate, they guard the ball, they don't require much help. And Cooper harassing Wagner there. That's a quick release for Reeves. Home crowd didn't think they got it off, but Bradshaw with the offensive rebound, they thought it should have been a shot clock violation. Kentucky has had some issues with its ball screen defense. Bradshaw, good job to turn Cooper back. Here's Johnson. Mack just barreling down the lane, and Bradshaw sends it 20 feet out. South Carolina offensive board, Talon Cooper. One of the best assist men in college basketball, but no finish at the rim. Uh, Cooper's a really good shooter. I thought he turned one down there. On the run out, nothing doing for Trey Mitchell and South Carolina the other way. Here's Michi Johnson, forgot the basketball. And now Reeves. The Kentucky team that shares the ball really well, 18 assists the game. That's a great job by South Carolina after a turnover, not letting get Kentucky get into transition. 
Reeves behind the screen. And Bradshaw goes over the back. Foul problem. Problems have been an issue for Aaron Bradshaw this young season. And now super subs checking in for Kentucky. No big Z yet. But Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham, top scoring subs in the country, come on together. And not only does Kentucky not miss a beat with those two dudes, but the offense seems to get elevated. Uh, they, they get better as they go to their bench. And if you're an opposing coach, typically when another team brings subs in, you kind of take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> not with this Kentucky team. This is the best sixth, seventh man you'll find in college basketball. Two first rounders coming off the bench. And another one in Big Z. Corner turn by Michi Johnson got all the way to the rim. And Dane, that's yeah. a snapshot of what Kentucky doesn't do well. That, that's a simple ball screen action. If you're not going to help, then Reeves has to contain that and no help on the drive. Dillingham with the crossover. Kentucky comes into this one with the fourth, fourth best offensive efficiency in all of college basketball. Reeves spins into trouble and turns it over. Hey, this Gamecock defense is for real, and Murray Boyles, the freshman, holding his own against Trey Mitchell early. And a foul against the catch, and Antonio Reeves trying to fight through the screen. South Carolina has dirtied this game up. We'll see if Big Z can clean it up. He'll enter when we return to Columbia. Well, it was the most electric debut in college basketball. As Vladimir Vesic was unavailable for the first 75, game, uh, 75 days of the season before he finally got NCAA clearance, and he made an instant impact. Georgia coach Mike White told me it got so loud, I thought Drake had walked in the building. He may not be Drake. But Alyssa's teammates seem to like having him on the floor. Yeah, and he may have taken the country by surprise, but he certainly did not surprise his teammates. This morning at Kentucky Shootaround, I asked Antonio Reeves when this team first got an idea of what Big Z was going to bring to this 2024 squad. He said the first time he ever set foot in the gym in Lexington, he got the ball at the top of the key, wide open, no hesitation, drained a three-pointer. We kind of looked at each other and laughed, right? You look at somebody like Big Z, he's not supposed to be doing stuff like that, right? He said he just gives us another great weapon on this team. You don't have to look far to see credentialed people showing their approval for Big Z, none other than maybe the best 44 in Kentucky history. And they've been four, uh, three of them retired. Dan Issel said, boy, number 44 looks pretty good. Uh, we're we're good. Regardless sure what happens good. this season, that'll be one of the most memorable and enjoyable moments in college basketball. Just what a fun atmosphere and excitement for Big Z. Calipari told him today, he said, I don't need you to replicate that performance. I just need you to go out, have fun, and play loose. Shot clock is late. It's at six for South Carolina. And Zachary Davis is off the mark with his. Davis has moved into the starting lineup at the injury to Miles Studi a couple of games ago. Studi out for a few weeks with a shoulder injury after a hook and hold. A turnover by Reeves. Great denial by Davis. Reeves was not expecting that. Cooper all alone. Got it. Talon Cooper, 42% from D. He's a big time shooter when you leave him open. He turned one down earlier off an offensive rebound that time. He says, I'm sticking this one. And a push off up top. Uh, and Zvonimir Vizic picks up his first. If you want to impact winning, do what number 12 in black has done. I mean, he denies the ball reversal, and that time he doesn't hide from that screen. He goes into a physical play, gets a turnover. Kobe right now on the floor for South Carolina. Michi Johnson getting a breather. Kentucky switching on those screens down low. Murray Bowles shares Cooper again. Isic lost the rebound, didn't like it, and then complained, and now a dunk from Josh Gray. 7-0, Carolina run. Dillingham off the window. Rob Dillingham can start and stop streaks like nobody else in the game. He plays to the crowd. They do not rattle him at all. 
Here's Cooper. They got Mitchell on him now. Back cut taken away. Wagner with the steal. Ahead to Shepard. Looking on the wing for Dillingham in transition. And what a look by Shepard. Just to have the vision to get it for an open three. And South Carolina's got to calm down on this end of the court. Uncharacteristic three turnovers already. They only averaged 10 on the season. If you can take care of the ball, you'll get the shot you want on this Kentucky defense. Inside, a block by Ibisic, and back out front, another offensive rebound. Jacoby Wright! Mitchell has it stripped. Kentucky basketball on this end, but five offensive rebounds for the Gamecocks. Uh, the first shot defense hadn't been too bad by Kentucky, but that's five straight points. Not able to corral the defensive rebound. First the dunk for Gray, and then that time Wright made him pay with a three ball. Here's Mitchell. Kentucky just three for nine to start this game. They haven't made a three. Ivasic on a rebound. And now he'll fire. Everybody in Big Blue Nation thought that one was going down. Now why not? Ball fake and no finish for Michi Johnson. No whistle and a push ahead from Shepard turns it over. Well, it is just straight chaos in this building right now, both ends. It, it, even though South Carolina has turned the ball over more than they normally do, Kentucky has not been able to make them pay in transition. Either poor decision making right there or the Gamecocks getting back and getting set. Johnson forgot it, found it. Here's Mack. Great hands by Reed Shepard. And then jumped by Dillingham. The great hands and instincts bail them out of some defensive slip-ups and breakdowns, and they're really good at that. Here's Mitchell for three. First make from deep for Kentucky after missing their first four. I mean, Mack had Mitchell buried down low. That should have been two points, but the quick hands by Shepard creates a turnover with Dillingham on the interception. Three points going the other way. Big B.J. Mack transferred in from Wofford. Well, Mont Paris made him a recruiting priority even before last season ended. Shot clock at six. Cooper, nowhere to go. Here's Mack, muscles his way inside, and Mitchell protects with the block. We have five tenths of a second left on the clock when we return from this timeout on the floor. But South Carolina shooting the ball well here early on. Shane Beamer all smiles, and that already has Kentucky fans riled up. Well, it's been a wild history between these two programs. Shout out Devin Downey. He had a monster game in 2010. 30-point performance against number one. That was a court storming. Darren Horn started 3-0 and in his career against Kentucky, by the way. Then 2016, two and a half minutes in. John Calipari didn't like that call. Not a Doug Sermons fan, at least on that night or that season. Tyler Eulis took over. He ran the offense. Kenny Payne won the defense, ran the defense. And Kentucky came back to notch the win. What happened last year in Rupp? Well, Michi Johnson, who grew up a Tyler Eulis fan, Channeled his inner cat. He went off in his first performance at Rupp with 26. And he said, I grew up a Tyler Eulis fan. I didn't idolize those guys that were so much bigger than me. I looked at somebody who played like I did. And growing up in the Midwest, we all knew about Tyler. I met him at a young age. I had a chance to say hi to him once or twice. And that South Carolina bench right now, Alyssa, must feel pretty good about this start. Well, you used the word chaos earlier, Tom, and that's how it feels in here. I'm sitting right next to the student section, part of the cockpit. It's been very loud, and that was something that Lamont Paris was telling us about during shoot-around as far as managing the emotions, telling his team. Three ball at the buzzer for Michi Johnson, and they count it but want to take a look at it. They will review whether or not this one beat the shot clock telling his team to relax and it would come. Well, nobody has relaxed here tonight. This is a high stress environment for a South Carolina team that is sitting on the tournament bubble right now. A win here would make all the difference. 
Well, and the frustration for the fans are that Kentucky got their buzzer beater off earlier in this game with the shot clock with point four. And so they're saying, why didn't you review that one, but you review this one? A little bit more of a dip in that one by Michi Johnson on his shot set, as opposed to when Reeves took it for Kentucky, got it out of his hands maybe a little bit quicker. But trying to take away that corner three has been a pri priority for Kentucky. But you see Wagner on the ball there. That's an adjustment they made. They wave it off, say no shot for Michi Johnson. If you go back to that last game where they gave up so many buckets to George on baseline out of bounds plays, it was because the guy on the ball was leaving that angle and trying to cover up the corner three. That time they give up the open three, but too late. Georgia converted on five baseline out of bounds, including three straight at one point the other night. Lamont Paris, or on Saturday, I should say. So yeah, we took note of that. We think we do some similar things. We can get some looks. Here's Bradshaw for three. Kentucky not shooting the ball well to start this game, and they came in sixth in the country in three-point percentage. South Carolina is not as talented at any position or on the bench than Kentucky, but Lamont Paris said, hey, let's just guard them the best. Anybody's guarding them all season long and see what that looks like. Stephen Clark unable to get it to go with a challenge, and now a 16-footer from Dillingham. He is an absolute jet. To be able to go that fast, stop on a dime, and then pull up under control, have the body control, beautiful shot. By the way, the depth of Kentucky is something else. They're on their third seven-footer of this game with Ogana Yenso playing side-by-side -side with Bradshaw right now. Good roll to the bucket. That is a failure on Kentucky's defense. And that's what you want to do is bring those bigs out away from the basket. Great play call by Lamont Paris. A lot of people now catching up on the Kentucky train from a national perspective thinking, well, they're now my national champion favorite because offense like that, best scoring team in the country at 91 and a half points a game. But you've watched a lot of yeah. them defensively, so they got a long way to go. Look, I think they've got a national championship offense and a round of 32 defense. So it's hard for me to buy in just how good this team is until they get better on this end of the court. 73rd in defensive efficiency. It's not a number that usually jives with a national championship or even a Final Four team. I don't love that by Mac. Again, go to some ball screen stuff. Get those bigs away from the basket as they did in the previous possession. They can move their feet. Here's DJ Wagner, dad of the house tonight. He's able to hit the finger roll. Uh, you can't find a better right-hand player going to his left at the basket than Wagner. He is so comfortable going that way. Nietzsche Johnson got underneath. Extra pass. Johnson's got on Yensel's on him. And on the switch. Good knock down the three. Six different cats have already scored in this game. And Dillingham gets another bucket. <laughs> he is an absolute bucket. I mean, the energy he brings. And the knock on him come to Kentucky was he wasn't really an energy giver. A little bit pouty with his body language. And, man, you would never know that. This guy's enthusiasm and practice shoot arounds and on the court is sensational. Go Big Blue ringing out here on the road. Jacoby Wright silencing the road crowd. Not shooting as well this year as he did last, but that's a big one. Ends a 6 0 Kentucky run. Dillingham leaning three, another. He is starting to heat up, and when he does, he can go nuclear. Unbelievable. Just give this guy the ball and get out of his way. Cats have scored on their last five possessions. Wide open. Extra pass. Clark with the ball fake. Got on Yenso in the air. And Stephen Clark, the transfer from the Citadel. We'll have two free throws coming. Four seasons at the Citadel, 88 starts. Last year was a 10-point-a-game guy, mechanical engineering major. This guy coming from the Citadel, well coached by Ed Conroy. Uh, when you have guys that are transferring up into a new opportunity, it's a trend that I think coaches are starting to recognize of, hey, I want people that are just so grateful, chip on their shoulder to prove that they can play at this level. And Clark has come in and just be like, hey, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Coach, tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. And he's done a terrific job in that role. 
from just up the road in Charlotte where he was a state champion in both the long jump and the hurdles. Clark knocks them both down. Well, Kentucky offensively got off to an inauspicious start, just three for their first 11. But they're six for seven cents. And Dillingham playing a big role in that. He's on the bench right now. Big Z back on the floor along with Mitchell and Antonio Reeves. Yeah, Dillingham went off, but without him, they've had trouble getting what they wanted. Great feed. And Zvonar Ivicic will be going to the free throw line. And so a terrific set play by John Calipari. The same thing South Carolina did is what Kentucky did to the Gamecocks. Bring Josh Gray, the seven-footer, out away from the basket by the three-point line, slip that screen, instead of letting a big man just camp down low and be a rim protector. Great conversation with Vladimir earlier today. And we went back to when he first arrived in time for a Big Blue Madness on October 12th. And the first time I ran into him, he was eating a steak off of a paper plate in the coach's office. He said, yeah, that was my first meal. He's not a skinny 7'2". I mean, he's a solid 220. What I loved about that whole night was the joy from his teammates. Uh, this team is so unselfish. You can see with the way they pass the ball, the way they cheer for one another. That's what makes them so special, especially on the offensive end. So imagine him folded up on an airplane for an 18-hour flight back to Croatia it, by you, way you of probably put, You'd probably put your seat back on. <laughs> <laughs> with seven on the shot clock, a huge three from Jacoby Wright, his third of the night. Lamont Paris's team showing just enough offense to keep the crowd in it tonight. And this isn't just, hey, making threes against Kentucky, they're high. This is a good shooting South Carolina team that went through a little bit of a drought early in conference play, but they've got their stroke back. Mitchell telegraphed that one. It leads to a run through on the other side for Michi Johnson. I, I just don't know how that happens if you're Kentucky. They never had to pass the ball. They just dribble straight into the teeth of the defense for an easy two. Wagner gets in the paint. Caught a piece of it. And then a foul. And that'll be charged to Gray. It will be his second. Payas continues in Columbia. We are deadlocked. Kentucky 21, South Carolina 21. Well, South Carolina has come out of the gate hot. They've been knocking down some big shots in transition or in a half court. Well, this is a huge reason why this South Carolina team is thriving under Lamont Paris in year two. They did not have this sort of three-point weapon last year, and they've got it spread out all over the court. Max not in the picture there, but they got one through five that can really shoot the ball. Like I said, they went through a little bit of drought to start conference play, but that was an anomaly. This is the South Carolina team that can flat out shoot the ball. They are 5-0 this season, shooting over 50%. That win Saturday at Arkansas. They never trailed. But on a 17 to three run midway through the second half to kind of pull away, it was their second largest win ever in a trip to Bud Walton Arena. Here's DJ Wagner directing the offense. Starters back on the floor for Kentucky with the exception being Big Z, Reeves, Mitchell. Shot clock at five. Step back three from the top of the key. And into the hands of Gray, who's playing with two fouls. To put in perspective how quickly Kentucky typically moves on offense, they've only suffered three shot clock violations all season. But uh, Carolina's really making them use the clock tonight. Gray with a touchdown. Ball. And a big time jam. And right around Zvonimir. Carolina on a 7 nothing run and now reach in foul on the defensive end from the Cox. Uh, the scouter report was for Avisic to send South Carolina's fives back to the baseline. Make them spin back into a double team. The double team came late. That's why the opening was there. And Gray finishes above the rim. There's been a... I feel like a lot more lineup shuffling here in the first half from John Calipari. Of course, he's got an incredibly productive bench with Dillingham and Shepard. And now Big Z coming off the bench. Uh, their best offense has been zero on white. That's about it. Hope from behind. It will stay with a catch with 16 seconds left in the shot clock. 
Dillingham has had incredible games over the course of this season. A one-man comeback on the road at Texas A&M and what was an overtime loss. He went nuts in the Kansas game. But just as easily sometimes disappears. This guy's been there every game. Reeves leaves it short. Bradshaw able to bounce it in. And that all started with a terrific back cut by Reeves. There was nothing there on that baseline out of bounds play for Shepard. And Reeves just makes the play, gets himself open. Shepard, great denial with his back to the basket. I, sometimes I think Reed Shepard has eyes in the back of his head. He's really good with his instincts. And again, when they have their defensive breakdowns, they are so athletic and so smart with their quick instincts. They make up for a lot of them. And right now, if you're Lamont Parrish, you say, guys, if we will just take care of the basketball, we can get good shots. But six turnovers already in this game for a team that only averages 10. They make a living by not hurting themselves, and right now they've done it too often. Cats shooting 45% early on in this one, just two of eight from three. Here's Mitchell. Up top, Dillingham off the mark. Now two for nine from three. Morris Ugasuk on the floor now for South Carolina. They've got great bench production already. Cooper cut off. A touch for Gray, or pardon me, for Murray Bowles, and he throws it to the second row. Turnovers climbing for South Carolina in this one. You mentioned that early. They only turn it over ten and a half times a game. They've already coughed it up seven times tonight. Dillingham picks up his dribble. Here's Mitchell. Whenever Dillingham gets the ball and taps his head, that means ball screen. He didn't give it enough time on that one. Kentucky turnover. Lamont Paris says, let's get an early one. Here's Mack again. P.J. Mack gives him 14 a game. He had 19 in the game at Arkansas. A high off the glass. It's his first bucket. They've got a lead against Kentucky, and they haven't gotten anything from one of their best players. Well, what's keeping them in it is the defense on this end of the court. They're one of the best in the SEC. They only allow six made threes a game, and that's Kentucky's strength. Right now, just two for the Wildcats, so trending well for South Carolina. Cats average 10 made threes a game. Reeves off the back iron. And then a Bradshaw foul the second time. He's gone over the back in this one. Uh, you have to admire the way Mack has boxed out on this end of the court. You want to make Kentucky be one and done. You're lucky if they miss in the first place, but you cannot give them any second chance opportunities. Well done by Mack. So if you think about what South Carolina has accomplished this far, Michi Johnson's been on the bench the last handful of minutes with Two personal fouls, and B.J. Max only gave, giving them two points, and they're up on number six. Yeah, I think Max's best chance at filling up the scoring column is pick and pop threes. It's just going to be hard with some of the size Kentucky has down low on the block. You got Wagner on him now. Big time mismatch. See who helps. Nobody really got in there, even though Mitchell tried to dig at it. Cats looking for the tie of the lead. Wagner downhill. Rebounded by Mack. Started his career at South Florida, then Wofford. Lamont Paris knew him well from his SoCon days. Three ball, no. And Reeves lazily pops it out there. And now Reeves running the floor. And it's blocked. Callan Murray bowls the freshman from right here in Columbia with the rejection. And Calipari wanted a foul. Usually when those arms go down, that results in a whistle. Must have been all ball on that end of the court. Cooper goes right by Mitchell, hangs and hits. <laughs> Largest lead of the game for South Carolina.
Mitchell working on the freshman. A near turnover. Kentucky will have 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Lamont Paris in his South Carolina Gamecocks turning up the D. Murray Broyles, the freshman, has stepped up on a big stage, letting defense create some offense. And how about a tough two? Take it in the chest of the defender. Finish strong. Kentucky just 38% shooting in this one. And Dane, I think it's fair to ask, you brought up the failures that they've had defensively. And if you look at it, and you know, Kentucky blue glasses, you can say, well, hold on. Who cares? We're scoring 92 points a right. game. But this kind of feels like worst case scenario in the postseason where one and you're done. And if you're giving up buckets and you're not getting them at the other end, you could be headed home early. Uh, there's a great quote. Don't accept in victory what you wouldn't accept in defeat. And there's no way this Kentucky coaching staff can turn on the film from last game against Georgia and uh, despite all the hype and all the highlights on one end of the court offensively, look at the defense and say that was a passing grade for anybody. Uh, they've got to be better on that end of the court. Yes, they're young. You have a lot of freshmen that are still learning how to play at this level defensively. And boy, mm. offensively, not a problem <laughs> for Rob Dillingham. I will say this, though, Tom. I'm not saying they wave the white flag on man-to-man. -man, but you never know when you're going to need a zone in the NCAA tournament. And maybe four or five plays a game, just work on it some, because I think this team could be good with a zone. Cooper for three to answer Dillingham at the other end. You know, it's interesting talking with this coaching staff. They work on zone in practice. They work on it just enough, and they have some looks to get multiple seven-footers in the game. But I don't think Kentucky's played a possession of zone since the 2016 game here when Cal got ejected two and a half minutes in, and Kenny Payne took over the defense. Here's Clark. Inside touch for Murray Bowles, who missed a good chunk of the season with Mono. He still doesn't have the explosiveness that Lamont Paris saw from him in the fall before he fell ill. Here's Dillingham. Man, he's a wizard with the ball in his hands. But he left it short and a foul afterwards. Rob Dillingham carrying the load for the Cats. He's got 11 of their 25. That's a concern, though, is as good as Dillingham has been, outside of that, they have not been getting the looks they want offensively. And so this is a little bit of gut check time for Kentucky. It's like, all right, typically we can score on anybody, anytime, anywhere. Maybe we need to have our defense lead to better offensive opportunities, get some stops, get this game going a little bit more rhythm. Kentucky is ninth in the country in offensive tempo. South Carolina is 348. They would love for this one to be played in the mud. Cooper, wild pass, but a foul inside. That is charged to Reeves. Uh, but it was a good look because Clark had no backside help deep defender on him, man. Cooper. As good of you'll find an assist to turnover ratio. I mean, the guy rarely makes a mistake. Seventh in the nation last year at, at Minnesota in assist. And so great read there. Clark had the defender in a tough spot. The correction, the foul was charged to DJ Wagner. It's his first. And now Stephen Clark back to the free throw line. And a ball is tipped out by Carolina. 130 left in the half. Uh, this is a South Carolina team that's going to look at halftime and say, guys, we should have 40. Uh, they've, they've missed some deep post-touch bunny shots. They've turned the ball over and missing the front end there. Uh, th this is a team that you, if you have a chance to expand your league on the Kentucky Wildcats and try to announce yourself to the world that you are a legit top 25 team, you've got to convert. Well, Lamont Paris has spoken of the disrespect that his players feel. He said, listen, I don't care about a top 25 ranking. I want our team to get better and better. I, I want it for the kids. And you look at what we've done so far this season, 15 and three winning record in the SEC. We're not in the top 25. By the way, in the season, it's seen 45 teams ranked before February. That's the fourth most in the AP poll history. Yeah, you ask anybody on this South Carolina roster, do you feel like the nation respects you? They quickly say, no, sir. Looking for that respect tonight. Jacoby Wright jammed up Reeves and picked up his first foul. But think about that. 45 different teams have been invited to the top 25 party this season. Mm. 
And a 15 and 3 South Carolina squad has been left out. Lenardi's got him on the bubble right now among the last four in. And a quad one opportunity for a team with a net of 61 with Kentucky in their home building. This is their third chance at a true statement victory. They lost a close one to Clemson. They had a terrible second half offensively at Alabama. So this is their third opportunity to verify and validate themselves as a top 25 team. Empty possession for the Cats under a minute to play in the half. This will be a season low for points and a half for Kentucky with only 25. Here's Mack for three. They got exactly what they want to get on Yenso away from the basket, pick and pop, make him cover ground. Just couldn't knock it down. Wagner downhill. Nobody else touches it for their second straight possession, and Cooper blocked it. Three consecutive times has Wagner gotten to that left side. Twice he's been fading to his left, and that time Cooper with the quick hands. He's been able to get into the paint, but it has not been a clean look at the rim thanks to the feisty defense by the South Carolina backcourt. See what the Cats have drawn up here. It's Reeves back to Shepard. Beautiful play, but he misses the bunny. Been that kind of night for Kentucky. Timeout taken by South Carolina with the shot clock off. And one last possession to try to build on a five-point lead. Where do you go here if you're Lamont Paris? I think you got to look at who's in the game for Kentucky. And again, I, I like the looks they've been getting for B.J. Mack on the pick and pop. Get those bigs out away from the basket. When South Carolina has struggled at the rim, it's with when they have not moved their post players out away, and Kentucky's just camped out down there ready to bail out the perimeter defender with a shot blocker. Yeah, South Carolina at the rim. There's three for 11 on layups in this one. So that size has been yeah. enough to bother that South Carolina front line, which has girth, but not a lot of size. Mack is 6'8", 270, and Murray Bowles is 6'7", 230. When I look at South Carolina's schedule, and they lost 74 to 47 at Alabama, and you say, OK, what could you take away from that that could be positive? The positive was, Alabama's explosive offense was kept in check on their home court. I watched that game. I go, you know what? If South Carolina could have thrown the ball in the ocean, they would be right there in the game. And so I am not surprised at all at how good South Carolina's defense has been. They shot just 22% in that game against Alabama. The credit to Nate Oates' squad. They're top 10 in the country in offensive and defensive efficiency. Shot clock off. Here's Talon Cooper. Transfer from Minnesota before that Moorhead State. Now Mack guarded by Mitchell. Two veterans going head to head. Clock is at five. Mack into the paint. Onyenso was waiting. Out to Davis. Got the three. Beautiful possession for the South Carolina Gamecocks. They open up their largest lead of the game. Up eight at the break. And this place is chaotic. See if Alyssa can hear us. Coach, how about a way to end the half? Great way to end the half, a good energy boost going into halftime. I thought we did a good job. I thought our energy was great. We were very active on the defensive end. We defensive rebounded, which is very important against an athletic team like this. Offensively, what do you have to do to keep the momentum going in the second half? I think if we can get stops and we get into transition, we get some stuff naturally out of a free-flowing situation. I think that's been good for us. I think also getting the ball inside has been good. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. They won last year at Rupp for just the third time in program history. He joined Horn and Fogler's the only Carolina coaches to pull that off. Can they go back to back? A little sandstorm to bring you back. The South Carolina fans are feeling it. The lead is eight. They're looking for their first back to back wins against Kentucky since the 2009-2010 season. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw. Alyssa Lang is here as well. The two things that really stand out. South Carolina defensively is really shutting down Kentucky's high-powered offense. And a lot of Paris' team is hitting some jump shots. Yeah, I didn't expect South Carolina to win the three-point battle in the first half, but that's exactly what happened. They were plus 12 in that first half from the three-point line compared to Kentucky 
who only had two three-point makes. And here you see how South Carolina was getting them, sometimes inside out. They got a plethora of guys that are all capable of making those. Kentucky gets confused on a switch. They leave Cooper wide open for a three. And then to end the half, Matt gets away with a little bit of a hook there. Leads to a three nonetheless. And when you got guys like Jacoby Wright, who shoot 23% on the year, but three for three in the first half, you know things are going well. Let's check in with Alyssa. Guys, I asked Coach Calipari what the emphasis was to his team at the half. He started by saying, I'm not sure I've ever seen my team miss so many layups. Two of 13 right now as we start the second half. He said, we told these guys it's going to be a physical game. When you're driving to the basket and you get bumped, you can't stop. You have to continue to finish the play. And if you don't make it, you got to get back on defense, something he has to see in this second half from his team. They missed seven straight layups at one point. Carolina hitting half of its threes and the deficit the largest this season for Kentucky. Thank you, Alyssa. One other note, Kentucky remains without Adu Thierro. Talking with Cal earlier today, Thierro's been dealing with a back injury. The call was for more rest. He's really close to coming back. Cal's like, I'm, I see him out there doing things, dunking the ball, and now more competition and more guys. Maybe he'll be back sooner rather than later. But it was an injury that called for plenty of rest, and Thierro has had that. This is the seventh consecutive game that he'll miss. Wagner turns the corner on Cooper. Dane, another thing for a Kentucky team that averages 18 assists a game, there's been a lot of one or no pass possessions. I mean, the goal is to make Kentucky take tough twos, run them off the three-point line, and South Carolina's done that. And Kentucky, again, they got to get stops because only two fast break points, as you see Reeves with that soft touch that we saw to open the game, but to try to get some tempo going, it hadn't just about going, been going two for 13 on layups. I think there's been a lot of physicality there that has caused that from South Carolina. Only two assists on the night for this Kentucky team. Here's Michi Johnson. He had 26 in the game at Rupp last year. They leave all alone, and it's off the mark. So when Kyle you're Murray Bulls had made a three all year. Yeah, if they're playing off you like that and you're a non-shooter, that's when you go dribble handoff at a shooter with the your defender sinking in the paint. Don't take the bait. Reeves with another one. Talking with Cal before the game, you said he has turned into a three-level score. He had the three-point shot. He's added the floater. He could finish at the rim. He's looking to be the first John Calipari coach player since Jamal Murray to average 20 points a game. Yeah, Reeves has been great and really benefited from this year's high IQ Kentucky team. By the way, the Cal player before that was DeWan Wagner at Memphis. Three ball from B.J. Mack. He had three threes in the win on the road at Arkansas on Saturday. See if the Cats go to Reeves here. Mitchell is a threat to shoot. Kick back to Mitchell. He's knocked away. Shot clock's at four. Mitchell up and under. What a move by the veteran. He shoots the three really well with his right hand, but when he gets near the paint, he loves the left. I mean, what a skill set to be able to bank that at the end of the shot clock and trust that left hand. Trey Mitchell is telling me he loses 13 to 15 pounds a game. He said, listen, it's it's mainly water weight, and it takes another 48 hours to gain that weight back. But I said, is this new for you? He said, yeah. Even though I've had other stops, play for Bob Huggins, played at Texas, he said, I've never played as hard as I do now. <laughs> well, part of that run and gun, and getting 35 minutes a game, you can see why they just can't afford to have Mitchell out of the game. He makes everyone better. He can play multiple positions, and as deep as Kentucky is, the common denominator is they are better as a team on both ends of the court when four is in there. Interesting moment just now as Bradshaw picks up his third. Ogata Onyenso was set to check in. Cal sent him back and instead decided to call on Zvonimir Vucic. Zvonimir said, yeah, listen, I played in loud buildings before. Played in Serbia. Get it out there with 20,000 people in a game. Two big free throws from Colin Murray Bowles. Vucic was playing in the Adriatic League at this time last year in his home country of Croatia. Want to go do Adriatic League games next year with me? 
Uh, I had enough of that with the Holland Seals. It wasn't really great for me. Reeves for three. Missed cue by Davis there. He gambled in the passing lane. This is South Carolina team that doesn't get a lot of steals because they stay disciplined. Davis gambles. Reeves makes them pay. Cats four for five in the second half. Reeves already with seven points out of the locker room. Beautiful feed in the clutch by Murray Bowles. And Murray Bowles has been the X factor in this game. He's been brilliant defensively, and you see how he's helping the offense there off a great spoon feed. Wagner throws it up. Visich finds it. He'll throw, jump hook. That's off the mark. He's getting bodied tonight. Back to Mack. Three ball. And the roof would have come off. Offensive board. And Carolina can reset, sitting on a six point advantage. Cooper trapped in the corner, and they're going to get Big Z for the foul. His second. And you can see they're trying to get Big Z in a lot of that ball screen action. It's one thing to come out of the gates and make a lot of threes and be skilled on offense, but when teams start attacking on the defensive end, it's just hard to be game ready and conference ready. I think After it's such a long sit out. I think it's hard also for a fan base to see what he can do 13 points and three blocks and try to temper your expectations at, at the worst, at the absolute worst. He's going to make this Kentucky defense better with a third seven footer. It's got five fouls to get. Yeah, absolutely. I think he can be a rim protector. He's got good instincts and timing. H.E. Johnson had it blocked by Reeves. Shot clock at nine. Johnson deep. And Mitchell with the board. You may say deep and bad shot if you're South Carolina, but that's a good look for Johnson. He's got that range. Dillingham lost it on the drive. Looked like it went off of the foot of Stephen Clark. And that's how KB Burdett Jr. saw it. We got a timeout on the floor. South Carolina looking for its fourth win in its last seven tries against Kentucky. It's college game day, and we got some heat in the building tonight. Aaliyah Boston with the Indiana Fever, and there's Don Staley checking the text, probably still recruiting and talking about that atmosphere that they're going to have in the PMAC against LSU on Thursday night. You know, the stars come out in a big way. Shane Beamer's in the building tonight. I'm a little surprised. Kentucky fans may not recognize Shane without his sunglasses on and doing some dance moves. Got his son in the building with him tonight. Nice to see coach at halftime. It, you get spoiled at that young age. It's like anytime you take your kid to a sporting event, if you're him, it's like, Dad, we're going to be front row, right? Yeah. Right? Of course so. One of the masters, we're going to be inside yeah. the ropes, right? <laughs> By the way, they honored Devin Downey during that last time out. Shout Devin Downey. How about <laughs> <laughs> His performance, not just against Kentucky, but you were happy, happy to see oh, him come man. to Carolina. Yeah, we were recruiting him when I was at Tennessee, and he came on an official visit and just balled on everybody, myself included. I hate to admit, but I've never been so happy that some that we didn't get a player <laughs> than I was Devin Downey. I wasn't playing much to begin with. I was like, man, this dude comes. It's a wrap. He had 30 in the win against number one Kentucky. Mitchell, nice move. Clark tried to ole him. Yeah, he tried to pull the chair, and Mitchell kept his balance and gone to work. I mean, outside of Dillingham, it's been Mitchell with a touch in the post that's been some good offense for Kentucky. Reeves came out shooting the ball well in the second half also. This is a South Carolina team that won on the road at Rupp last year and a turnover from Zachary Davis. Here's Dillingham out front. Oh! Euro right into Gray, it seemed like. Kind of stutter stepped and went into the big fella. Uh, that starts with a careless turnover by South Carolina. If you're Davis, you got to think advantage, disadvantage. Throwing a pocket pass to seven foot Josh Gray, who's not a pick and pop guy, 20 feet away from the basket. 
You, you just got to keep that dribble alive, get something better. Mitchell again, and they're going to get Clark. Shakes his head. Kentucky likes that matchup. Yeah. Clark will battle down there, but uh, I think Mitchell will take that all day long. Trey Mitchell was asked about playing on the road in this environment this week and not many empty seats to be found in this building. He said, you know, I'm more excited about going on the road. Get a chance to hear him boo you, the respect that they have for this program. Now, remember, this is a guy who went back to Texas Tech with Beard's team after he had left Lubbock. He said, I don't think I'll ever see a scene like that. They nearly turned the Texas bus over, shaking it side to side. <laughs> well, he has been the ultimate transfer portal pickup for this Kentucky team. I, I don't think anybody thought that one of the major keys for a turnaround for this Wildcat team would be this man right here, Trey Mitchell. But he passes it, he shoots it, his IQ's there, his voice is there. He's brought tremendous leadership to mix in with the talented youth. He had 18 and 12 against Louisville included, and that total was four threes. And he's money at the free throw line tonight. And, and don't forget, uh, it was a large, long part of this season where there were no seven footers available. So he's like, no problem, I'll hold down the five spot. Need me to move to the four, play the three, whatever you want. Cooper turns the corner. Extra pass, St. Cooper on the baseline from eight feet. Now Mitchell, left it short. He can make that. I, I just don't know why you don't just post him up again, though. I mean, he was drawing fouls down there, getting to the line. Why settle for the jumper? Mitchell oh. took an elbow yeah. to the chin from Clark, and Clark getting called for the foul. And they make a look at that and think about a flagrant possibility. Yeah, but I, I'm anxious to see where Mitchell's hands were. Nobody wants to hear cylinder foul, but if your hands are within the cylinder, that counts. And it seemed like he was pressing up on him pretty good. Keep an eye on Mitchell here. I mean, his hands are all over him. Uh, that should be a cylinder foul on Mitchell. Prior to the elbow to the chin. Yep. One of the things officials look at when trying to decide, look, let's fast forward to the elbow part, trying to decide if it's worthy of a flagrant is were the arms parallel to the ground or were they up and down? We'll get more of an explanation. Well, they're taking an extra look as Ron Gruber explains to see indeed if there is a cylinder foul that occurred before the elbow, what else did you learn? Well, and because they made a call on the play, this could be upgraded to a flagrant. It could be changed to a cylinder foul. Yeah, that means, sorry, just to clarify, right now it's Stephen Clark's third foul yeah. and possibly a flagrant. It could change to a foul on Trey Mitchell. That's right. Explain the cylinder. Explain how close you have to be as a defender within the within the offensive player's area. Yeah, so even though Mitchell wasn't in what we call the cylinder, being within a few inches of the player, you got to give the offensive player room to move. And so because the hands were inside the cylinder, that still counts. Even though that part wasn't really part of the play, he was in the cylinder, and I'll be shocked if they don't come back with this and say cylinder foul. It's exactly, exactly what we're going to do. The space a player may legally occupy defined by an imaginary cylinder surrounding the player and extends from the floor to above the player. And so they take away the foul on Stephen Clark and they assign it to Trey Mitchell instead, essentially for not giving him space. And Cal just kind of waves off the explanation. Boyle's trying to make something happen. 
Went away from home for his final year of high school out in Utah. And Lamont Paris, that's where he really grew as a player. Cooper got a muscle into the paint. Dillingham spin move like a ceiling fan, but no finish. You know you're a good team when you got multiple songs, multiple genres out about you from the <laughs> Thundercats to Robin Reed. Dillingham said, yeah, I, I heard that song. I like it. I, I think it's pretty good. I said, well, anytime somebody writes a song about you, you you're obligated to approve of it. I do not speak from experience. Three ball right. Got it. Timeout, Kentucky. Jacoby Wright has hit four threes tonight. Maybe turning into a moment and a night to remember for the Gamecock faithful. Well, Jacoby Wright is having a monster night against a top 10 team tonight. Uh, this guy is just a gamer. He, he steps up in big moments, unafraid of the competition, the environment, anywhere. 23% on the year from three. But you can't just look at the stats in a game like this when you're playing against Kentucky. And this South Carolina team shoots it better than the percentages show. They play with a lot of confidence. And Jacoby Wright, I mean, he was the key with that big road win they had at Missouri. Hit a game winner over 7'5", Connor Vanover. So, again, this guy is really doesn't show much emotion at all. There's a game winner in overtime. They're undefeated when he gets a double figures 4-0 on this season. And the Kentucky impact felt even where he grew up at Fort Mill, South Carolina. He grew up a Devin Booker fan. He's got great composure, and it's that type of veteran leadership that allows them to play with poise. And only one turnover in this second half for South Carolina. Alyssa, what'd you learn in the Kentucky huddle? A couple different things. Calipari emphasizing to his team, hey, we're gonna, when you're going to lob it up to the bigs, lob it up higher. They had a moment with Dillingham and Ugo where it was a little too low. There's Mitchell inside. Do you have more? So they're going to be going more full court to try to change this tempo up. It's hard to throw a lob over their seven footers, right? Here's Mack for three. Got it! Second three of the night for BJ Mack. The lead's back to eight. Mitchell lost it. Carolina chance to push. Wright has it rejected by Mitchell. And now Kentucky the other way. Kentucky really limited in their fast break points tonight. Only two. And a foul inside of B.J. Mack. Lamont Paris talked about the opportunity to run and the difference in these two teams. He said, listen, when my guys have a two-on-one, a two-on-two, a one-on-two, there's good shots and there's time to set the offense back up. Kentucky can still get good shots in transition because they're so athletic. Well, and they've been getting good shots on the baseline out of bounds. Reeves misses that floater there, but uh, I've just been impressed. When South Carolina makes a mistake, boy, do they hustle back, and Kentucky's not able to get any of those easy transition opportunities. Wagner really leaning on Cooper. Turnaround jump hook. What a shot. Talon Cooper has led South Carolina to its largest lead. And a bump out front. With every minute that passes by, this South Carolina team is growing more and more confident. And Kentucky, with every moment, is feeling more and more pressure. South Carolina has held Kentucky to just 38% shooting, and the Gamecocks have gotten big buckets for their biggest of big men. Well, this is a microcosm of the game right here. South Carolina getting open threes and breakdowns on Kentucky's defense, drawing two defenders in the paint. Drive, draw, dish. Great job by Michi Johnson 
And B.J. Mack being a pick and pop big has changed this South Carolina offense from where it was a year ago. It spreads the team out, uh, the, the game out for the opponent and offers up those driving lanes. Perfect execution there. And if you're Kentucky, you, you got to be get, able to get around that on Michi Johnson, stay in front of him without requiring that second defender and getting into those rotations like they so often have been. Gamecocks got off to a great start this year, 13 and one, their best start since 2016, a year before they went to the Final Four. They added B.J. Mack this season from Wofford. He last year gave him 16 and a half points a game. He had a lot of teams in the SEC coming after him. Florida, Bama, Arkansas, LSU, first team all conference in his recruiting story is a doozy. They lost in the SOCON tournament before South Carolina showed up in Nashville for the SEC tournament. Lamont Paris said, I've never done this before. He took a side trip to go visit B.J. Mack in Charlotte, recruit him before they even got to the SEC tournament. Well, that paid off. Yeah, that, that's big time commitment right there. And Lamont Paris said, I know for a fact this guy is perfect for my offense. Showed him plenty of clips of Kaminsky at Wisconsin, the pick and pop opportunities that you're seeing him thrive in right now. That name, Frank Kaminsky, and adding on Wisconsin, Kentucky fans just shriveled. They are not happy right now, and even less happy after the three from Michi Johnson. Well, John Calipari told his team, don't be shocked if he pulls up from deep. You must be there on the catch 30 feet away. Johnson makes some pay. Ain't nothing Gamecock run. Wagner from 15, what a move. That could be a good shot for him, especially as teams are waiting on him to drive hard to the basket with that rim protection. If he can add that to his arsenal, it takes him to a whole nother level. Well, Michi Johnson, such a rhythm shooter. Got to find a way to get five the ball again. Try to get a touch on the post. Shot clock is at four. Wasted a lot of time. Cooper. Whoa! Now he's feeling it. That's a deep two. Offensive foul, Justin Edwards. This place is bananas. Michi Johnson told us today, there's nothing I want more than to knock off Kentucky again. I told my team I was going to have a big game. I posted on Instagram on the bus headed to Rupp last year. I think we're due for another one tonight. That is confidence, is bravado, and tonight he and his teammates have backed it up. Well, and Coach Lamont Paris said, chip on your shoulder can make, make you great on defense, but on offense you got to have swagger. And that's exactly what he's getting on this end of the court from his Gamecocks. Three ball, right. And the Gamecocks win the battle on the boards that time. Thirteen point South Carolina lead. Here's right. And an air ball from the wing. Kentucky with a chance to push. But look, all five back. I mean, no opportunity for Reeves to attack the lane. This is the nation's top scoring offense. Surely they got a comeback in him. Wagner, little wobbly, getting back to his feet. They got clipped in the head when he went down. But an air ball is usually like a turnover. It means the other team is off to the races. And South Carolina sprints ahead. No advantage for Kentucky. And every time they drive, they're going up against a set defense. Unable to get South Carolina in any rotations. So right now, John Calipari saying, OK, we got a lot of different lineups. Who's my best five down 13 on the road in the second half in SEC play? You see who it is right now. That's a lot of qualifiers to throw <laughs> out there. Mack faces up Mitchell. And then Mitchell for a reach. And Mack with a WWE move as well. Yeah, he, he likes just that Barkley back down. And that's a little bit why their tempo is so methodical, uh, are the Gamecocks. They take their time. It's not that they're slow. They're smart and deliberate 
And when you got a guy like Mac who could create a disadvantage, it just takes a little bit of time. Be patient. Oh. Whoa, wide open. It's something to play Kentucky against Georgia. Lamont Paris worked on that at shoot around today. So that near side defender will leak towards the corner. It will be wide open. Dillingham to Mitchell. Wrap around. Vizic with the dunk. Way to finish up top, Big Z, and go up strong. And boy, did that, they need that one. But they've got to follow up a score with a stop. Question remaining in this game is can the Cats' offense get hot? Craig, a couple pump fakes. Vizic with the foul. And Josh Gray going to the free throw line for a three point chance. Well, Josh Gray is a seven foot big man. They really don't call any plays for. He averages two and two, gives them some physicality, big size. But that time the play call was for 33. They emptied out the backside through a perfect lob. And you talk about patience. One, two, three, four pump fakes before the M1. Gray started his college career at LSU as a seven foot senior from Brooklyn. Gives him two points a game tonight. He's got seven. They are beyond ecstatic here in Columbia tonight. 16 point lead over number six. This is shocking. Shot clock at 10. The veteran Mitchell. Freshman Shepard. Nope. Well, Kentucky wants to get back in this game. It's not going to be half-court offense. They must get some stops on this end of the court. We talked about it before. This was the biggest concern of the Kentucky Wildcats. A national championship type offense with a round of 32 type defense. They got to change that quickly if they want to have a come from behind victory on the road. Cooper with the shake and the teardrop. Talon Cooper's got 16. Carolina looking for a knockout blow here late in the half. And a foul on the drive. Kentucky get a chance to regroup. And this South Carolina team is going to strut back to its bench in front of this sellout crowd. They're playing with oodles of confidence tonight. Time to check out the good hands play of the game brought to you by Allstate. It's a season high in conference play for threes for the South Carolina team. Well, they were red hot in the first half. You wondered if it would carry over in the second, and it sure has. And most of them have been very quality looks, many off of assisted makes. Mack has been huge with his pick and pop. Cooper's been dynamite as well. Michi Johnson, we hadn't said his name much, but if you come out there with a hand down, it'll be man down. Michi Johnson. Loves the big stage. It's a team that made a school record 18 threes earlier this season against George Washington, but an SEC high with 10 tonight. Alyssa? Standing over at the South Carolina huddle just a few minutes ago, guys, they are feeding on the energy inside this building. You know, earlier today at shoot around, Michi Johnson was reminding his team very loudly, very vocally, we live for nights like this. Listening to all five players on the floor sitting there saying, this is our game right now. They're controlling the momentum. They certainly feel that way. And they feel like they can go on a run here to try to put this one away. If they can hold on to this lead, Alyssa, thank you, of 18, it would match the largest margin of victory over Kentucky since joining the SEC. That was the last year for Billy Gillespie at Kentucky. And Darren Horn was the head coach here at South Carolina. His son Walker on the Kentucky bench today. Zachary Davis with the foul. That's his first. Well, he's done a pretty good job on this in the court, but he got an earful from Lamont Paris because not once but twice as he tried to gamble in a passing lane. He's got to be disciplined on this end of the court. Dillingham looking for Z. Nothing there. Reeves downhill. How good is Reeves? I mean, this guy is just playing like an All-American. And you talked to him last night about kind of getting back to what he was offensively. Yeah, I mean, he's a three-level type scorer and not just a shooter. And I think 
his usage has been different this year because they're not asking him to do as much as it was a year ago, and not to mention playing with smart, high IQ, good passers all around him. I was talking to Cal about that this afternoon. He said, you know, last year we had to run a lot of plays. We had to do that to get looks. Now we're more of a free-flowing offense. And Reeves a big part of that. Seven-tenths of a second remaining on the shot clock. And it'll be a baseline out of bounds. A bad shot there for South Carolina, but the key to their offense in this second half has been only seven turnovers in the first half, one in the second. All right, how about the baseline out of bounds? We've seen South Carolina take advantage of Kentucky time and time again with that after the looks they got from Georgia. Yeah, it's communication for Kentucky. Who's guarding who? If you're going to switch, switch. Too often, two guys are running on one man, leading to open buckets down low. Seven tenths of a second left on the shot clock, and the officials want to make sure the clock is right. They want to see if the ball hit the rim. And then we got a shot clock reset. It's one little tweak to what Kentucky does with the guy on the ball on the baseline out of bounds. It's not uncommon in college basketball these days. There's a replay, and that did hit the rim. You can see the rim give. As the ball comes to the left side, and the net move. Yeah, you got that as a touch, or am I yeah, crazy? I'm, I'm with you, and I can confirm that seeing 20 up there on the shot clock right now. So 20 on the shot clock, point still stands, baseline out of bounds. And, and what Lamont Paris did was, instead of sending a guy to the basket early on the baseline out of bounds play, send him late. Make Kentucky think that action's already been expired. Send him late, see if they do it again here. Reeves turns back around to get in front of the ball. There it is. And there Mike. it is. And they expose it once more. Michi Johnson this time. It's the timing and development of that. Yeah, don't go just once. Go a second time after the defense thinks you're not going to cut that way again. Great play call by Lamont Paris. Wagner tried to step through. Mack pulls it down. Michi Johnson had 26 last year at Rupp and looking for an assist to Murray Boyles. There's a Kentucky breakdown. You just got to be able to guard the ball and not get beat off penetration that easily. Top 10 teams on the road, no safe haven in college basketball. 22 road losses by top 10 teams against unranked foes so far this season. That's the most before February in AP poll history. Well, this is a Kentucky team that averages 19 assists a game. That's what makes them so good. Right now, it has just been a my turn offense. Mm -hmm. And number zero and White hadn't gotten a turn. You might want to get Dillingham the rock as well. He's the best one on one player. Kick to the corner for Cooper. And we know Dillingham can get hot in a hurry. Here he is down the lane with the left, and he's going to the line. Well, one of the few times Kentucky's been able to get South Carolina on their heels defensively, and there's not a faster guy or fa faster guy on the roster with the ball in his hands than Dillingham. He Bob, just has another gear that the others don't. Bob Dillingham is a freshman from Hickory, North Carolina. Played a Combine Academy, then went out to play at Kanye West School, Donda Academy, out in Simi Valley, California. That didn't last long. That school was expanded. Ended up in Atlanta at Overtime Elite. It's a lot of travel already for Dillingham in his first bucket of the second half. Here's some of that full court pressure that they just hadn't been able to really set up because of the inefficiency in their half court offense. You got to get a bucket in order to get into it. Shooting just 40% in this game. Tough to set it up. Carolina was prone to turning it over in the first half, not so much in the second. And they shot 54%. Back on the release. Working on Mitchell. Bradshaw was there to threaten the block. That's just not where Mack is going to have success in this game. This is going to be on the perimeter with all that length. Under five to play. Reeves going to the line. 
Well, that's consecutive plays now. Kentucky's been able to draw contact in the paint. I mean, that's the best way to claw back into this game, stop all the momentum, get the fans quieted down, and get some points at the free throw line with the clock stop. Colin Murray boils with his second. Two coming for Antonio Reeves, who's fourth best in the league at 88% from the free throw line. Reeves has scored 20 and three straight. The last cap to do that in four consecutive was P.J. Washington back in February of 19. He's on the cusp of being a 50, 40, 90 guy. 52% from the field, 43% from three, and 88% on the season for the line. The only other person in college basketball that does that is right here in the SEC, Tamar Bates at Missouri. And Missouri and a and m to follow us right here on the SEC Network. Bates coming off of a monster game this weekend for Missouri. The lead is 15. It was as large as 20 just a moment ago. It's a big cushion, but the hardest part of an upset is the close. And there starts to be a little bit of tension in the stands. They triple teamed him, but couldn't get the ball. Here's Wright. Working on Justin Edwards. Nice feed. Murray Boyle shares again. And Graham with the jam. Murray Sensational Boyles. ball movement. Yeah, Murray Boyle, the freshman, has been phenomenal on the defensive end. Makes the right read there. 30 and Black's been terrific. Dillingham with the pull up. He's got 16 to lead the Cats. He's 7 of 12. Uh, just got to keep getting zero of the rock. Good things are happening right now. Cats can't get a stop. They can't get closer in this game. Dillingham forces a jump ball, and the arrow will keep it with Carolina. Cats have already scored more in the second half than they did in the first when they held it 25 points at Lamont Paris' defense. Lon Cooper, fourth among active players in career assists. Murray Boyles. And Cooper with the rebound. I shouldn't have reset it, though. They never hit the rim, did it? I don't think it did. I think they'll have a side out of bounds, but before that, a timeout on the floor. See if South Carolina can hold on to knock off number six Kentucky at home. And the top ten road struggles in college basketball continue. Tom Hart, Dane Bradshaw, Alyssa Lang as South Carolina aims for an upset. The lead under four. And this is a South Carolina team that put up 33 points in the first half and somehow they got hot in the second. Yeah, and if you're Kentucky, you, you say, man, we had a gut check time. We got to lock down defensively. And all South Carolina has done is have 11 assists on 14 makes and only one turnover. It follows the theme against this Kentucky defense. If you don't turn the ball over, because they are good at creating steals, if you don't turn it over, you'll get the shot you want. And South Carolina has solved that riddle so far, but still a lot of time left with a Kentucky team that has not given up. There's a chance to be a history-making night for South Carolina. The two largest wins against an AP top 10 opponent in program history were both 14-point wins, 97 against eighth-ranked Cincinnati in 1956 against their ACC opponent, number eight, North Carolina State. What is it about top 10 teams in college basketball <laughs> struggling on the road? There's a target on the back, and home court advantage matters. Alan Perry is all the way out in the court. He's nearly at midcourt right now. He's just out of your screen. You can see his shadow on the right side. Here's Cooper. Tough shot. And he hits the midi. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. 18 points, five rebounds, five assists, and has controlled the pace of this game. Who is the leader on this Kentucky team? We know offensively Dillingham wants it. Uh, I think Trey Mitchell's your guy. He's the veteran. He's the voice in the huddle. But right now, he's not your best offensive threat. 
And he turns it over. Kentucky's struggles in the paint and at the rim have been a story all night. Uh, they catch just, a break in that possession. Yeah, they're seeing bodies every time. Even when Reeves and others have made some tough floaters in there, it's typically been a contested tough two. Life on the road is not for the faint of heart. Here's Reeves, power move. He's just so good. That's three times now he's gotten good looks on baseline out of bounds right there on that baseline. Carolina could have put one up but decided to run some clock here under three. Fallon Edwards is second. You called it a really smart play by Mack. Instead of trying to do the crowd pleasing three ball, understand time and score, waste some clock. Kentucky has to foul out there on the perimeter. They're extending out there. That's not their strength. And Wright puts it on the deck, gets the hand check. Jacoby Wright scored four points in this game last year. He came in averaging six this season. And he is having a night that he's going to talk about the rest of his basketball playing life and then some. Yeah. If you would have told me Mac and Michi Johnson would have been held into single digits this late in the game, I would have said Kentucky's running away with this one. But guys like Wright and Cooper and Murray Boyles have been phenomenal. Wright's got 13, just five off of his career high, and a foul in transition. We'll go against South Carolina, and that is uh, Michi Johnson. That was a concern for Lamont Paris was how good Kentucky has those advanced passes. They get it up the court so quick. And I like that drive by Edwards initiating the contact, going to that strong hand. Here's Justin Edwards, a freshman from Philly. Came in as the jewel of this recruiting class, the number one class in the country, but this hasn't advanced at the same level as some others have, whether that be Dillingham, Wagner, Shepard. But to his credit, the reason he's in the game right now is because this Kentucky staff says, you know what, who's our best defensive lineup we trust right now? And he's part of that. He's not part of the equation as best offensive five guys they can put out there. But this is where he can create his niche is on the defensive end when they must get stops. And Edwards able to knock down the free throw for his first two points of the night. Chance to put on the pressure. Mitchie Johnson gets rid of it quickly. Lamont Paris likes to say if my team has 75% of the talent of the opposing team, I expect to win the game. If we don't, I'm furious. He expect when we talked to him today, he expected to win this game tonight. Well, and I don't know that he has 75% of the talent. But boy, is this a true team. Uh, and they just hurt you in so many ways. It all starts on their defense. And even right there, breaking the press late game. What a luxury. You've got three guys that have played the point guard position at South Carolina to break that press with Wright, Cooper, and Michi Johnson. Cooper, obviously, the primary, but the others have a lot of experience at that spot as well. He well, said he wanted to get his team to the top 25 for his players but he was also keenly aware of the selection committee he said listen these are humans I know how they think forget about the algorithms forget about all of the formulas that they lean on if you've been in the top 25 they start paying attention they remember you on selection Sunday this will be a second quad one win for South Carolina Dillingham off the back of the rim and a good hustling save by Talon Cooper Two minutes to play. South Carolina going to try to nurse this thing for the final two. Dillingham with the reach in to stop the clock. I thought South Carolina could win this game if it was in the low 70s. I did not envision them being able to hold Kentucky to 57 points with less than two minutes to go. And credit to Lamont Paris. He believed in his guys. And when you look back last year when Lamont Paris was hired, there were, I believe, five coaching changes in the SEC. 
he was at the bottom of that list in terms of splashy hires and expectations. But right now, he is proving everybody wrong that he is more than capable of getting South Carolina back to the NCAA tournament. Wright's got 14. There's no secret to what Lamont Paris needed to do. And when he was at Chattanooga, he did a fantastic job of using the transfer portal even before you had the automatic year and getting real talent in there. They went to the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago on a buzzer beater. And he said, I just had to get the right talent on this roster, play the way I wanted to play. Last year, pretty much a wash. Even after their big win against Kentucky, well, they fell apart yeah. down the home stretch. This is different. And he'll be the first to tell you their defense is further along than they ever thought it would. They knew they'd be good defensively, but they felt like they're becoming elite. And we talked about it earlier, even a loss at Alabama, they held the Crimson Tide in check on that end of the court. And you see what they're doing now against a team that's usually in the 90s at this point. South Carolina is 12 and 0 this year when it scores 70 points or more. And looking to go to 13 and 0 on that. All right, let's put our focus on Kentucky for a moment. You said all week when we were talking leading up to this game, the defense is a real problem no matter who does or doesn't want to admit it. Yeah. What was worse tonight, more of a concern, defense or offense? Uh, I'd have to point at the defense because this is a South Carolina team that I, I do not look at as an explosive one. And here in the second half, 15 of 28, 11 assists on 15 makes. It, it just shows they've been, get, been able to get whatever they want. Now, if they can lock in Kentucky and get those defensive stops, of course it'll help their offense. But this is why I've been hesitant to say final four or bust for Kentucky if they can't right the ship defensively. 20 for Cooper. Not quite a downy, but close to it. Dillingham. Nope. There are some misses at the rim in the first half for Kentucky, and they never yeah. found their rhythm. Yeah, you're exactly right. And they've gotten within right around that restricted arc three or four feet away, but it has been contested and physical. It's a physical game. Even John Calipari's got some blood on his lip. Here's Shepard, big time three for his only bucket of the game with a minute to play. Shepard trying to pick him off without fouling. 14 point difference for South Carolina for the first win against a top 10 opponent since they knocked off Kentucky in 2020. The South Carolina team just so balanced. Uh, they might not have a ton of superstars. Michi Johnson can get red hot from deep, but man, do they do it by committee. Deep three. Why not? Michi Johnson again. And the capper for this South Carolina team. How about that? A kid that dreamed of playing for Kentucky, grew up idolizing those guys, as you mentioned earlier. And he's there with the dagger from 40 feet out to say, if you thought last year was a fluke, think again. The South Carolina Gamecocks are real and a top 25 team, thanks to guys like Michi Johnson. We've got Missouri coming to town on Saturday. That's a one o'clock start on the SEC Network. Then they go to Tennessee a week from tonight. What a matchup. That will be two defensive-minded teams. And what a week. This is college basketball, right? There wasn't a happier locker room then Kentucky's with Big Z coming back, having one of the most fun games anybody could ever remember at Rupp Arena, and then life on the road in the SEC brings you back down to earth. No doubt. Reeves, a little off balance. Only question is whether or not they're gonna storm the court. And the black jerseys proved to be the winning combination. The quarter zip worked as well. John Calipari, Pulls his team off the floor with the court storming. Due to come in 4.8. And they will let the final seconds tick off. And a court storming here at Colonial Life Arena.
From a court storm to sandstorm. Another ranked team, another top 10 team goes down on the road in college hoops. This isn't about what's wrong with Kentucky. It's about what's right with South Carolina. The Gamecocks have arrived on the national scene. to back wins against Kentucky for Lamont Paris in the South Carolina program. One on the road at Rupp and one here against a team Dane that on Saturday looked unbeatable. Uh, but South Carolina came into this and Lamont Paris told his team he said hey this is our goal. Make us be the toughest defense Kentucky's faced all season all season and let's see how that looks. Well it looks like a 17 point victory in a court storming. Unbelievable. 40 minute inspired effort by the Gamecocks. Everything worked well for South Carolina tonight. Let's check out every detail counts brought to you by Pfizer. And boy, it was the guard play playing with great confidence, starting with Michi Johnson. Uh, it sure did. And they just did so many things well, sharing the basketball, getting the easy twos. As Kentucky had to extend their defense, they couldn't keep the man in front of them. Breakdowns happening, help come, no help the helper. And it was easy twos when they weren't making threes for South Somewhere Carolina. Somewhere in that mass of humanity is Alyssa Lang. Coach, you've talked about the chip on their shoulder that this team has played with. You just knocked off a top 10 team in front of a sold out crowd at home. What does this one feel like? Uh, it's awesome. I can't wait to get back in the locker room with my guys. This is uh, a great moment for them. They've worked really hard. Uh, they've been committed to defense in a way that I've rarely seen. And, I think you saw that tonight against a really talented offensive team. So I'm just proud of them. You've hung your hat on the defense of this team all season long. What was the mentality of the way they approached this one tonight? Yeah, each guy guard the ball as well as you possibly could, be as solid and as disciplined as you possibly could, and then fight like hell on the boards. Should this team be ranked next week? If they're not, that's a real problem. I, I'm not on the committee, but maybe this will make them pass the eyeball test somehow. So we'll see. Coach, is this a new quarter zip, or are we adding this one to the record? It was an undefeated quarter zip, so I felt pressure to go with an undefeated quarter zip tonight. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. And the quarter zip stays undefeated. Incredible scene in Columbia. Gamecock snap a six-game losing streak against AP top 10 teams. They'll be partying throughout the night. Their last win against a top 10 team was January 15th against Kentucky. Alyssa. Here with Delon Cooper. Delon, you had a career night tonight. Talk to me about what this team's mindset was coming into this game. Uh, our mindset was just to be us, you know, just be us and play our ball. And, you know, we came out to win, so <laughs> I made that say just be us. Coach has talked so much about the culture that this team has built. I'm watching you guys on the bench coaching each other up to finish this one. How would you describe the way you just played with this group of guys tonight? Unbelievable, togetherness, just family. I mean, we all love each other. Before the season, all of a sudden we had each other back, you know, and that's what we did tonight, came out and played for each other. It felt like you guys couldn't miss, certainly from three. Was there a moment where you individually felt like, I'm gonna throw it up and it's going in? Uh, late shot clock. <laughs> I had no choice but to throw it up. and. It was, it was just so good, and then winning, I'm, I'm thankful, thankful. I know you guys have talked about earning the respect of the rest of the country, getting ranked. Is this enough to do that tonight? Big opportunity. I mean, great team, you know, and it, we just came out and proved that we, we're here. Like, they counted us out, but what are they going to say now? Congratulations, Talon. Thank you, thank you. And it's pretty simple math in college basketball this season. It's not just about winning that night, an unranked team against a top 10 opponent. It's backing it up. They'll get the chance with Mizzou coming to Colonial Life Arena on Saturday. What a scene. I love what Lamont Paris said. The chip on the shoulder makes us play great on defense, but it's got to be swagger that makes us play great on offense. Boy, did they have some swagger in this one. Well, we're going to have a hard time with the <laughs> traffic. It'd be like being stuck behind a train here in Columbia. Huge win for South Carolina. They go to four and two in conference play. The SEC, like the rest of college basketball, is officially bananas. 
79 to 62 is the final.